Haki is by far the most broken ability in all of One Piece, allowing people to do truly insane things like see the future, defeat their enemies with a single glare, or even negate and overpower even the strongest devil fruits out there. It's a power that even allows people without a devil fruit like Roger, Shanks, or Mihawk to stand at the top of the One Piece world, but even though most people are familiar with the three basic types, did you know that there are actually 18 unique types of Haki ability that someone can train and unlock and I'm going to explain all of them. And to begin, what exactly even is Haki? Well, the Japanese world itself has quite a range of translations including spirit, vigor and ambition, but the best and most simple to describe it is willpower. Meaning that Haki is the willpower of a person manifested in several different powerful ways. The Dark King Rayleigh describes it pretty perfectly when he's training Luffy actually. He says that quote, Haki is a power that lies dormant in all the world's creatures. Features. Someone's presence, their fighting spirit and intimidation, it's not that different from the things that humans are naturally able to perceive such as these. The act of not doubting oneself, that is true strength. To sum it up, Haki is the secret backbone of the entire One Piece power system and it's got a bunch of really crazy variations that Haki users can master. In fact, each type enables them to pull off some truly mind-bending feats, so let's break each of them down. And to begin, there are three basic forms of Haki, of course, Armament, Observation, and Conqueror's Haki. Now, these three core abilities on their own can actually take a weakling average fighter and turn them into an absolute monster. Armament Haki enables its user to use their own aura as a sort of armor to defend against attacks and boost up their power to truly incredible levels. Not to mention that it's the core way that Haki users can actually take down Devil Fruit users. Especially those pesky Logia Fruit users because they turn their body into elements. However, if a fighter uses Armament Haki, they can actually use their fearsome willpower to disable a Devil Fruit power and compress it back into the human form. Doesn't matter if they're made of sand, smoke, or even ice, with armament hockey, you're going to land a mighty blow directly on someone's face. But just when you thought it couldn't get any more powerful, what if I told you that every type of hockey also has these incredibly advanced sub-applications? Yeah, it gets truly bonkers, and the things that people do with advanced armament hockey, it's absolutely insane. Let's start with the first one, which is Ryo, and with it, Ryo Emission. It's a quite absurd power we learned about first in Wano. It's kind of the art of emitting Haki out of the user's body to stop their foes. We actually see this time and time again during Luffy's fight with Kaido, where thanks to the Yu emission, Luffy is able to attack Kaido without even having to touch him. But people can actually take this even further, producing the terrifying and devastating internal destruction. And not only does that sound like a kind of sick metal band, but its power is truly unstoppable. Because as the name implies, it basically lets the user imbue their hockey into their target, literally destroying them from the inside out. And as you might have noticed, you can't really block an attack from the inside. So just thinking about this kind of sends shivers down my spine. That's a kind of godlike ability to have right there. But with all of that in mind, we shouldn't really forget the other ways to fight as well. After all, not everyone uses their fists to completely smush their foes. Luckily though, as it turns out, swords and other objects with hockey are just just as effective. And that's because external infusion allows the user to push their own willpower into an object like their weapons, bringing their strength and your ability to a truly indestructible level. Swordsmen like Zoro, Law, and the strongest swordsman of all, Mihawk, use this power to cut down their opponents like slices of butter. Whether it's dismantling the stone colossus Pika, shredding the fearsome glutton Big Mom, or destroying entire frozen tsunamis, Hockey Blade truly produce some nightmarish results. And yes, also before someone goes, oh, actually, Manu, yeah, you can actually infuse any type of weapon with hockey. Snipers like Yasop or Van Auger can infuse their hockey into their guns and bullets. Fighters like Yamato and Kaido can infuse their giant clubs as well, so don't try to get too technical on me here, please. And so once again, bringing it all the way back to swords here, though, there is one final advanced armament hockey technique that I still haven't brought up. It's quite mystical. It's very sacred and it's only been done, as far as we know, twice in the series. Mihawk's Yoru and the absolutely legendary samurai of Wano, Ryuma's Shusui. Because we're talking about the ultimate
ultimate technique of the Black Blade. Basically, it's implied that a true master swordsman can imbue their own haki into their blades so much and so often that at some point it becomes permanently infused with their willpower even when they're not around or even dead. This creates an unshatterable, powerful blade and needless to say, it requires a true mastery of haki to accomplish this feat at all. In other words, no wonder that they are legendary swordsmen because their haki powers are quite divine as well. However, they do say that the mind is stronger than the body and when it comes to hockey, well, that may just be the case as well because Thanks to observation hockey, people can literally break the laws of space and time. Yeah, it gets quite extraordinary. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, get ready, because once I talk about the advanced version of observation, your jaws will truly drop. Trust me, I can see the future. Now at its core, observation hockey really revolves around enhancing one's eyesight and senses and how you perceive the world. Using your willpower to boost your own senses, enabling you to process things at a truly incredibly fast speed, people like Dracul Mihawk would be a perfect example of that, being able to see the insane speed of someone like Gear Second Luffy during Marineford with just basic observation hockey alone. For comparison, that is something that even the CP9 agents weren't able to do. Or of course, another really great observation user was NL during Skypea, however, for them it was actually known as Mantra. This basically allowed him to sense the entire Sky Island, knowing when issues and intruder arrived and basically knowing everyone's position in his surroundings at all times. That is way better than having a security camera, that's for sure. You see, this form of hockey is practically a sixth sense, but instead of seeing ghosts like that old movie, you can detect other people's emotions, presences, and strength, and even intent through your sheer willpower. That is absolutely wild if you ask me, and Kobe is another prime example of emotional sensing as well. We actually see him do exactly that at Marineford where he first awakens that ability. Kobe detected all of the negative emotions of all the soldiers and pirates active during the war. In fact, it was so overwhelming for him that he nearly broke down thanks to that insane flood of negative willpower into his own head. And while that's all fine and dandy, let's get into the real nit and gritty here and let's talk about the advanced applications and their truly mind-bending power. That's because the advanced version of the basic observation hockey transforms into true aura sensing and thanks to that characters can actually detect people down to their very shape and exact location from miles and kilometers away. As a great example we see Usopp and Fujitora do this during Dressrosa and it's actually how Fujitora perceives the world in the first place and how he's able to walk around. Just the only way that he can detect and see anyone is this crazy advanced form of observation hockey. Next, there is also the really weird voice of all things. Something that almost seems like an imaginary conversation or psychic ability, the user can actually detect the thoughts of animals and some objects. Didn't even know that was possible, but hey. People like Luffy, Roger, and Momonosuke seem to use it to locate and decipher the Poneglyphs, the ancient map to Love Tale. On top of that, they also communicate with legendary, highly intelligent creatures like the Sea Beasts and the Titanic Elephant Zunisha. And while it hasn't been 100% confirmed yet, Trafalgar Law may also actually have this ability as he seems to react very similarly to the others in moments where the voice is important. In fact, Zoro may even have something similar, though it might be its own ability as during his battle with Daz Bones he seems to hear the breath of all things. Something that hasn't really been explained at all but seems to fall in line with this early understanding of hockey due to his insane fighting spirit so it might be something like the voice of all things or it might be its own unique subcategory of observation hockey altogether. And to make things even more unbelievable the other two advanced application of observation are the real meat and potatoes here because these skills break the laws of physics and may just be the craziest powers in all of One Piece. And to start, even though it's technically not quite canon, I do have to bring up Usopp and Yasopp during the One Piece film Red. And that's because a lot of abilities in that movie seem to have great implications for the canon rest of the series, as we will talk about later with our resident hockey man, Red Hair Shanks. However, staying with observation hockey here, the two sniper family members actually seem to do the impossible. They are able to to share their vision between dimensions. How? 
What? Yeah, it's kind of insane. Usopp and Yasop are able to actually connect their vision, each able to see what the other person is doing, ultimately leading them to take down the Todd Musica. Now, I do hear you. I want to see canon abilities, Manu. Well, don't worry. First of all, well, Film Red actually included a ton of newly revealed canon abilities, but we also did save the best for last because that's right, it's time to talk about Future Sight. This absolutely broken ability allows a hockey user to literally see into the future. It's an ability that only the most advanced users of observation hockey can actually use, and if you don't have it, good luck trying to defeat anyone who does. That's because they will know what you're gonna do before you even have the chance to ever pull it off. Honestly, they know about it before you even think about it. Katakuri nearly destroys Luffy having this ability, and we actually see its true power and full potential thanks to someone like Shanks, who may just be able to see not just seconds, but several minutes into the future. At least it's implied to be that long on Elbaf when he ruthlessly cuts down useless Kid over here after he foresees that he will attack all of his weak underlings. And actually, speaking more about Shanks, I think it's finally time that we talk about the strongest and most exciting type of hockey that there is. Conqueror's Hockey. You see, Conqueror's Hockey is simply the ultimate willpower. And and unlike most forms of hockey, it's not available to everyone. That's right, while technically the other two forms can be trained from the ground up by anyone there is in the One Piece world, that is not the case for this last one. Only those with the will of a king can actually handle this true power, and if your inherent desires aren't to be the strongest or the best or to be king, you just will not be able to access this force of nature. We're talking one in millions here. And before we get too carried away with the specifics, I want to mention that this power actually manifests as an absolutely killer looking black and red lightning. It is the most metal looking thing in all of One Piece without question, including Kit, and this unrelenting force just so happens to be the coolest looking thing in the entire franchise in my personal opinion. But here's the best part. While its raw power is quite unrelenting, it's also not that complicated to understand. After all, we do love ourselves a simple but effective power. Because because basic Conqueror's Hockey has basically just one use. Pure domination. In other words, it's awesome. Nevertheless, basic Conqueror's Hockey does allow someone to use their willpower to override the will of weaker people. Essentially, you're playing a game of war, which means whoever's willpower is stronger will win. That's of course why actually standing up to a Conqueror's Hockey user, you do need to have truly incredible spirits yourself, or Conqueror's Hockey in the best case as well. Now, we actually first see this power used in the series in the very first chapter by Shanks when he stares down the Lord of the Coast, who is a massive sea king, leaving it swimming away with its tail between its fins, I guess? Yeah, that's right. With one glance, a true conqueror can just destroy their enemy's will to fight, eat, and even survive in the first place. And as you can imagine, as a result, there's only a very, very small handful of characters that can actually use this power in the story. In fact, there are less than a total of 20 confirmed users of this hockey throughout the entire series, and even fewer can tap into any of its advanced forms. And speaking of those advanced forms, uh, there are five of them just like with the other two, and they are truly terrifying. But let's start with the simplest one, which is animal taming. Through their willpower, this form allows a user to not only knock out their animal foes, but rally them to their own side instead. Now, for the most part, they use it to simply make them stand down, such as Rayleigh, for example, with this massive elephant, or Shanks with the Lord of the Coast, but Luffy constantly uses it to befriend animals throughout the series. Which by itself is already such a cool power, but now that the nice one is out of the way, let's get straight into the menacing Conqueror's Hockey Infusion. Because that's right, just like with Armament Hockey, a true Conqueror's Hockey wielder can actually also infuse their weapons and their fists with their kingly will. In doing so, allowing them to physically attack their enemies with not only their armament, but their king-like will as well. It may sound simple, but it's an absolutely busted ability, and there is 
is a reason why only a true few handful of people have ever mastered it. Not only that, but we do find out through Kaido on Onigashima that it's absolutely necessary to master this form of advanced hockey in order to even become a Yonko. Well, I guess until Buggy rolled around at very least, or who knows, maybe that clown will bust out the most insane and world-breaking hockey in the series? We'll see. However, as it turns out, this type of Conquerors may actually have its very own sub variant. Kind of like a Russian nesting doll for hockey techniques, and that's because it's heavily implied that Zoro's legendary technique, Ashura, is actually a sort of variation on hockey infusion. At least it is, according to Kaido here. Because using this fear-inducing power, Zoro seems to be able to manifest multiple limbs and swords to slice and dice his enemies. And to be fair, it may be that he's simply projecting his hockey into his blades and body so that he can move at supersonic speeds, or that's just how his enemies perceive him, but even then, it's clear that Zoro can do something with his Conqueror's hockey that most other people can't. And speaking of Conqueror's hockey abilities that nobody can actually do, it's time to talk about the king of this ability, Red Hair Shanks. Because this man can seemingly do it all, and it's all thanks to his immense willpower. In fact, he's just a true force of nature of willpower and practically a walking natural disaster. It's been implied that he can knock down fleets of over 100,000 men by simply using his basic Conqueror's hockey, and when he busts out any of his advanced forms, well, it's pretty much game over for anyone in his path. Yes, I mean, of course he does have the hockey infusion, the taming ability, but that's not even half of it. He can actually project his own Conqueror's hockey a minimum of hundreds of kilometers, as we've seen him projecting his own hockey from his blade from the top of his ship on the shores of Wano all the way to the top of the island. Are you kidding me? He's practically casting spells at this point using his hockey. I mean, move over hockey man, Shanks is practically a hockey god. But you see, I haven't even told you the craziest thing about him yet. You see, his final technique breaks the rules of the One Piece world itself. To put it bluntly, he's able to transcend time itself using his kingly hockey powers. What do I mean by that? Well, we found out in volume 4 billion, which was a special release together with Film Red, that Shanks has the special title of Killer of All Observation Hockey. You heard me right. This man can destroy an opponent's ability to use Future Sight with his own Conqueror's Hockey. And not only that, it doesn't negate his Future Sight, he can literally bend the laws of space and time to his will. Like, what's an absolute legend? His Hockey is truly the king of kings. Really, the only thing in One Piece that helps you somewhat get a chance against such powerful Hockey in One Piece is an even more powerful devil fruit, but just like with hockey, there are surprisingly a lot more than the three basic types of fruits that you're familiar with. And you can learn everything about the 11 different types of devil fruits in this video right here, and I promise you, it's somehow even more mind-boggling than hockey. Thanks for watching, and using my future sight, I can see you having a blast with the rest of this One Piece content. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, helps the channel, and I will see you in the next one.